I welcome Jan Salasiewicz here at the House of Culture in the Welt uh, in the context of our Anthropocene uh, project. Welcome, Jan. Thank you, Bernd. It's, it's a, a pleasure to be here, I have to say. I just say one sentence is who you are. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Jan is a senior lecturer uh, in geology at the University of Leicester, and he is member of the Stratigraphy, Stratigraphy Commission in London. Yes, yes, that's that's. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Says everything. Sums up the case very <laughs> nicely. <everything. laughs> yes. Um, we, in the context of the Anthropocene project we just opened, uh, we have different islands, and you spoke last night on the island of time, and introduced there a winner of the Anthropocene. Um, perhaps you can speak about the winners and losers of the Anthropocene. Who was the winner? The first? winner in this case, uh, the, the winner, um, uh, I think in every possible way on, on uh, that evening, was the cat. The cat. I, I, um, I chose a cat um, at, at first frivolously uh, and then realized that it, it, it suited the case really quite well. Um, so, natural scientists have sometimes frivolous ideas? Of course, yes. I think we are driven by, by <laughs> frivolity, you know. And then, uh, in, in our more uh, what's the word, serious moments, we sort out which ah. of those ideas actually make some sense and can be developed mm -hmm. uh, in, in, into something so that might be. So, frivolity is a starting point, we and play. then it becomes rational. Yes, we play. We mm -hmm. play with ideas. And I think that is. Uh, th you know, the, the idea of, of, of the scientists, perhaps geologists, perhaps we are uniquely frivolous in the scientific world, uh, but uh, in, in my experience, uh, uh, the, the best ideas have come out of the moments of, uh, of best humor and best cheer and... and, and w w why geology? Because it, you have to do with such long time scales uh, that it's al almost unimaginable for a human being? Yes, I, I think that is, is, is certainly part of it. We have to deal with, with the whole Earth and now other planets as well over four and a half billion years. And, and it is not just the time, but we have to deal with all of the processes. So mm. we have to take on board the, the biology, the chemistry, the physics, uh, the oceanography, the, the, the cryosphere, all, all of these aspects which, which intertangle and have intertangled over this time. And it is, quite frankly, it's overwhelming. Mm. So one of the, the ways of surviving within this okay. is simply to develop a particular, if you like, attitude or style or, or sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> no, it sounded as a project, a lifelong project just to study all these sciences. Yes, it is. And, and, and you can take any one of those mm -hmm. and, and then a, a sub-discipline within a sub-discipline within a sub-discipline of one of those. And it can keep you going for a lifetime with no problem at all. But each of these uh, sciences have their own language, so yes. how to translate these languages? Uh, well, one can learn different languages, of course, or learn to speak um, uh, uh, pidgin, mm -hmm. the word, you know, this, this sort of rather uh, abbreviated, truncated um, cartoon language. Uh, so we learn to speak pidgin chemistry and pidgin physics and pidgin biology. Uh, enough to get by, enough to talk okay. to the people who know their stuff. Uh -huh. and, uh, and hopefully make so some after sense. this uh, small journey into the cartography of natural sciences, mm -hmm. coming back to the losers and winners <laughs> <laughs> of the Anthropocene. Yes, yeah. So the Anthropocene is is this extraordinary time, extraordinary time geologically we have, and that that I guess is the basis of it. That the world really is changing, and it's changing in a fashion that can be compared with some of the great changes that have happened in the the millions and the billions of years in, in, in the past. Uh, and we are uh, struggling, I think that is the right word, to come to terms with this and, and to, uh, to describe it initially, you know, to, 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 to uh, analyze it, I guess, would be the more serious word uh, in, in its various characters. Uh, to see quite yeah. where we fit in. Before, the before we come to that, why is the cat the, the winner? The cat is the winner because of all the changes we're making, um, the, the most important are the biological ones. Mm -hmm. um, the Earth is important um, and pro probably certainly cosmically important because it is a, a, a living planet. It, 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 it is covered by a living, intricate, infinitely complex skin 
uh, which the, the, the Mars and Venus and Jupiter and Saturn and Titan and probably the vast majority of planets do not have, uh, that has developed over most, the greater part of the history of this planet, it has been a living planet. Mm -hmm. And it has stayed a living planet. Uh, and that life has undergone changes, uh, sometimes quite abrupt changes, sometimes it has been knocked back uh, and then has rebuilt itself after that. Uh, within the episode of knocking back of life to a rather more, if you like, degraded form, uh, you know, some forms of life have suffered more than others. Uh, and some, of course, have done quite well mm -hmm. out of that, and mm -hmm. they have been the survivors. Mm -hmm. uh, so currently, uh, the, the, the creatures of, of the animals and plants that have done well mm -hmm. out of our time of influence, of geological influence on, on this planet, uh, have been the creatures that, um, firstly, we have transported with us around the world, mm -hmm. uh, willingly or unwillingly. You know, the, the best example of the unwilling uh, passenger that we've taken is a rat, of course, mm -hmm. and rats have done mm -hmm. very well uh, out of us. They're pretty well on every island around the world, every continent, the, the, the brown rat and the black rat, and particularly the brown rat. Um, and the cat is another one. The cat, we have, we have this... Then this was quite unintentionally, or... <laughs> yes, I, I, I don't it's think... It's not really a cultural project to take the rats with you. No, no. They, the, the rats are just very good at coming along, uh -huh. finding a place somewhere around, somewhere close mm -hmm. to us. Uh, and, and uh, you know, they are complicated and intelligent creatures, social creatures. Mm -hmm. uh, and they have successfully navigated their way onto our ships mm -hmm. and then navigated onto the islands quite by themselves, and we haven't wanted them there. Would you say they are as intelligent as we are, as far as survival is concerned? Oh, uh, in or terms of survival intelligence. intelligence, yes, yes. I think in, in terms of functional intelligence to, to promote the, the, the species and, 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 and to do that, then uh, clearly okay. they have done very well. Uh, and, and they can survive in places that we cannot survive, and they can survive in, in conditions that we cannot survive in. Uh, and the cat comes probably a close second mm -hmm. to that. And we. It is a very interesting relationship between us and cats, uh, because yes, sorry. Go ahead. we um, cats, while remaining wild creatures, you know, they are still the same, essentially, I think, as a wild cat. They can survive in the wild. There are many feral cats mm -hmm. around. But they have learned to make us look after them and to care for them. Uh, and in, at times, we give practical help. So they changed us more than we changed them. It, it, it has been very much a two-way process. Mm -hmm. So they have altered our behavior. And by, um, by doing all kinds of things that we like, some useful, simply they, they catch rats and mice. Mm -hmm. So when life is hard, yes. uh, and, and my mother and her sister, when they were um, transported to Siberia, in 1940, they, they had a kitten. One of the very few things they took with them was a kitten. Mm -hmm. And for two years, that kitten lived, became a cat, lived with them in, in, uh, in, in the camps where they worked as lumberjacks. Um, uh, and the cat helped to keep down. And the cat remained uh, and was a valued member of the community after that. So to some extent, they uh, survive at the moment partly because of us? And they may survive us. Yes, uh, they, they, they can do both. I think mm -hmm. they can do uh, both. They, can, they, s they do very well with us. Mm -hmm. And they clearly do very comfortably with us, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, you know up to the most pampered of all cats. Mm -hmm. But they can equally, mm -hmm. they, if, if we are not here, yeah. they can go out into yeah. the garden wilderness and live. Now we're coming to your job as a geologist, uh, proving that there is an Anthropocene or not. Yes. Can you describe a little bit this process? What are you doing in this process? We are trying to look at the evidence for the scale of the changes in the world over the last decades, centuries, few millennia, and then trying to compare those changes with the history of the Earth's past, and particularly uh, of changes that might be comparable and that have been used to subdivide geological time, past time, into the, the dynasties of, of time and of process that we call the Jurassic and the Carboniferous and the Cretaceous and the Pleistocene and so forth, to see whether the events of the present and the very recent historical past match up 
with those events which have been used to subdivide time mm -hmm. um, and to see whether the revolution we have at the moment is to a slightly drawn out but geologically rapid revolution is, com is comparable to those events of the past and can be used similarly to separate off a unit of time, a geological time, that we would call the Anthropocene, that would have a beginning that we still have to decide where it is quite, um, and then can be used as a, uh, as a descriptive tool within the geological sciences, part of the, the common language that geologists use, um, and clearly it is also being used outside of is, geology. Is that not also a great challenge to geologists, normally thinking in millions of years and now thinking about a new age which just started perhaps in 45 uh, after the Second yes, World War yes, yeah, yeah. or perhaps 200 years ago. I mean almost nothing as far as geological time is concerned. What does it mean for a geologist who is uh, really used to other numbers? It is, it is, th 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 there are, it is an interesting challenge in, in many ways. The time scale is, is clearly a challenge in, in that. Uh, mostly we look at millions of years. That is now a little bit of a caricature. Uh, over the past few decades, geologists have been trying to resolve past time, geological time, in finer and finer and finer detail down certainly to millennial scale, particularly mm -hmm. when we speak of, of, of the, the history of the ice ages, mm -hmm. the last two and a half million years or so, which is tremendously complicated. Um, and even at times to centennial and decadal scale, geologists look in particular for these what they call very high resolution records uh, in stalactites, in, in lake sediments and such like, to give very precise detailed histories, which they then try and compare histories from around the world to build up a picture of the planet. But it's not just the fact that you now speak about in perhaps a new age which just started and human beings are the major protagonists in yes. that, yeah. that you made it to the economist? Yes, yes it, it so is. So uh, geology becomes popular because also of this debate? Yes, yes, uh, and this is again a, a ra geology by and large is, is uh, is not the most well known of the sciences and the most well understood of the sciences and particularly an aspect like stratigraphy which used to be almost the dullest part of geology it used to be mm. a you know the tabulation of, of the sets of strata and of the geological periods and, and of, of the fossil groups and so forth um, and it has slowly be becoming more interesting as, as that has been converted into a, the building up of earth history but certainly this has been a, 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 a an explosion almost of interest mm -hmm. given the realization that the changes we see around us as, as history and economy and, 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 and the environmental matters might be significant in the scale of deep time. Can you say a, a few wor in a few words how the process is to define the Anthropocene in geological terms? So how long does it take to do the research what are the procedures to define it finally? What the, the uh, it, it normally is a, a rather long, drawn out uh, process. Um, and typically, for all the past um, periods, people have studied the strata mm -hmm. and built up some idea of, of the succession of, of strata and types of rock and types of fossil uh, which reflect types of event in the past and have built up an idea of the history and then begin to realize there were times of change and maybe you could separate strata and history into units of time uh, and they, they kind of worked those out in finer detail and then the formal part comes in so there is a formal body called the International Commission on Stratigraphy which has been around for uh, over a century essentially um, and, and there are groups working within that uh, which then decide upon the boundaries by weighing up the evidence in mm -hmm. the strata. And the process uh, normally takes decades mm -hmm. because the evidence is complicated. Um, uh, there are different schools of thought uh, who weigh up the evidence. What are the major criteria? It is, um, the major criteria uh, for most of this time has been the fossils, because mm. the fossils give the clearest mm. reflection mm. Uh, of age and process mm -hmm. and, and event. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a unidirectional change. Mm -hmm. Once a, a, a creature has become extinct, it doesn't come back mm -hmm. again. So it's a unique marker in time. Mm -hmm. 
there are now others. There is now the chemistry of the rocks and so forth and so on. But it is this evidence that is then used to weigh up to find a position in time. The specificity of the Anthropocene in relation to other ages is really the protagonist <laughs> in this, which, which is the human being, which to some extent you are a member of this group. Yes, <laughs> yes of course. Uh, yes, yeah. so, so there is an individual emotional component yeah. into that. What does that mean for your research? I could imagine because of that, it it's much, makes much more fun to do that. It's an, it's, it's, it's an interesting complication, for sure. Uh, and it, 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 gives, it adds dimensions to the task uh, that uh, make life both harder and more interesting. Mm -hmm. um, the, in, in some ways, the fact that it is humans who are doing by far the major part of the driving of these changes, uh, in terms of the geology, is immaterial. The, the important thing is that the changes are happening. Were they caused, let's say, by uh, a giant mutant koala bear, which has decided to dig holes in the ground and dig up coal and put bamboo pipes into the ground and, and all of these sorts of things? Uh, but the effect would be the same. The world is changing um, in, in significant and geologically significant fashion. The other important thing, I think, is that we're going about the process back to front. The history has been looked at, and now we go to look at the strata, look for the evidence to compare with the past. So the process is, is partly upside down, which again is an interesting complication. Yes. Uh, in another talk, uh, when you described your attitude or the whole process, uh, you uh, stressed the point that uh, you have to be as detached as, uh, as a person as possible yes. uh, to the whole issue, because when it becomes uh, clear that you are emotionally, socially, politically even involved uh, in, in, in the whole research, um, then to some extent it weakens the results. Um, um, at the same time, when you describe the decision makers, you use the term, they are very conservative. Conservatism is also, uh, let's say, not an, a scientific, natural scientific attitude. It's a, it's a, in, in, in the case of the, the geological timescale, it's a functional attitude. Mm -hmm. um, the geological timescale to geologists is quite crucial. It is the backbone which underpins the whole of the science, more than anything else. And one of the, the great needs in that timescale is for it to be as stable as possible so scientists Earth scientists have a common language. So to change the time scale is something that is undertaken um, only after deep thought, and not at all lightly, and certainly not at all frivolously, uh, because it creates all manner of confusion uh, in, 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 in the main part of the language that geologists talk. So there is a great reason for this reluctance to act until the evidence is quite clear and also that the evidence is quite dispassionately stated. So we're not a pressure group. We cannot mm -hmm. be a pressure mm -hmm. group. We, of course, in, in the sense of the Anthropocene, sensulato, mm -hmm. realize that is a part of the concerns we all have about the way the Earth is developing. Mm -hmm. But in terms of it as a formal geological unit, it, it, it does have to be dispassionate, and we do have to look for and welcome evidence both for and against its formalization. I completely understand when you say the findings to prove if the findings are uh, this or that, that this you can do in a, uh, let's say, a distanced way. Uh, but the result of it has, of course, tremendous political uh, and social yeah. implications. How do you, as a scientist, who is also part of society, play with these tensions of, let's say, your uh, role as a scientist, but also as a member of a society, as a member of social groups, and so on? That is, is going to be one of the most um, delicate parts of the whole operation, I think. In for all the other periods and epochs and eras, um, the stratigraphers have the stratigraphic community, the earth science, the earth history community, have decided upon 
the boundaries and the geological time scale because it largely affects them and also other geologists, but it is their business. And, and the, the world outside simply accepts the divisions. Mm -hmm. Here we have a potentially geological time unit within which we are living, which affects everybody around us. And as you say, its formalization can have significance beyond geology to important parts of the community, to the, 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 the social, the legal, and, and mm -hmm. so on communities. Mm -hmm. um, I have suggested rather cautiously and hesitantly that when the decision making is in process, then those, the interest of those other groups should be borne in mind alongside those of the geological community mm -hmm. in the determination of whether or not mm -hmm. the Anthropocene as a formal unit is useful or not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is separate from the fact whether it's geologically justified. Mm -hmm. that, is yes. we th that is one thing. The other branch yes. upon which the, uh, the formalization sits is mm -hmm. whether it is useful or not. Yes. And that is, is the question here. Yeah, th this is exactly, let's say, the drawing line uh, between a natural science project and a project of the Haus der Kultur in yes, der Welt yes, as yes. a cultural, political, social project. Yeah. Um, and I think th the major aspect w wh where I also got so much interested in the whole uh, project, also the natural science project, was that it seems to me that for the first time natural scientists are with their findings as scientists inviting the humanities, people from the cultural side, to join in yes. in order to make out of this findings a cultural project. But when you see that, the, the problem arises of different languages. Yes. You have natural sciences with their own language, their own criteria, and uh, for example, also their own objects, yes. uh, speaking about such time frames mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, humans as species yes. is something different than to look at very concrete local historical contexts mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and how to translate that. How how do you see this situation? Uh, um, uh, over time and, and over many cups of tea and glasses of beer even, I think that is the only way. You're, you're quite right. There are different communities involved and, and the, the boundary between, if you like, the strictly formal analysis and the wider exploration of this concept is not hard and fast. It is mm. rather a fuzzy and, mm. and, and porous boundary, I think. Mm. Um, and it is valuable mm -hmm. to the geological community to have mm -hmm. the other communities involved mm -hmm. in this. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, the other communities have their own languages, their own patterns of logic as well, mm -hmm. you know, which, again, we have to learn to understand and which I've mm -hmm. been appreciating rather quickly in this last couple of days here, the, the differences between, let's say, motivation and prediction and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is important because if humanity is driving these changes, then what is driving humanity? What within humanity, individually and collectively, you know, is leading them to these rather uh, 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 concrete and measurable phenomena such as biodiversity loss mm -hmm. and, and uh, you know, carbon dioxide increase and so mm -hmm. forth. Uh, but yes, uh, all these things uh, take uh, time and effort and, and, and it's a sometimes a, a two steps upwards, three steps downwards process in, in, in that. So basically, would you agree that we need a kind of new forums for interactions between natural scientists, people from the humanities, uh, social, act, uh, social actors? Yes, yes, I, 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 I'm, I'm sure, I'm even more sure after these last couple of days, having experienced, mm. uh, you know, simply the involvement, you know, over breakfast this morning, you know, with biologists and philosophers, uh -huh. uh, and, and the, the conversation was so intense and went on for so long, I almost forgot I had to be here. Mm -hmm. And I had to rush away and, and rush here to be here on time for this. And, uh, uh, and we'd been talking for the best part of two hours about without realizing where the time was going, simply to try and develop this common language. So, uh, and it is, I personally find it valuable. And I'm sure that... So you as a uh, geologist and I as somebody uh, who is uh, leading a cultural institution has a new, have a new project together. Yes, that would be great. That Thank yeah, you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ben. <laughs>